guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the Android 12 which I have been using for about two days now and if you don't know how to flash this Android 12 port on the Redmi Note 7 Pro you can check out the card right there or you can look at the description and you will find the guide to flash this particular build and yes this is a portable drum not a like particularly stable kind of build but it is actually quite stable and here I have been using it without a sim card but if you have a sim card you might try it but you may face some bugs here and there because this is only the beta 1 factor image of pixel android 12 and the build date again is 21st of may 2021 if you look at the about section this is how it looks like in the dark theme of course and we have the android version as android is showing up but if you keep tapping over here as you can see it shows android 11 still but yes this is how it is as of right now and the security patch is latest of may 5th 2021 and we have the play system update as april 1st 2021 and we have the stock kernel as the pixel gb kernel and we have the build number over here now in my personal opinion i would say this already is very very promising and as you can see this is how the recent panel looks like right now and if you look at the home screen this is how it looks like everything is very smooth and it is quite snappy if you consider this is only the first build of android 12. now what are the changes that i have been noticing well here as you are noticing we have these kind of animations if you are noticing up close let me show you as you can see whenever you are scrolling it has this like a little bit of stretchiness whenever you are scrolling somewhere in the ui so everywhere you will find this and here let me show you one more thing that if you tap on any kind of settings let me show you in this setting as you can see it has this little bit of starry kind of look let me show you one more time so did you notice that let me show you here in the battery saver toggle so yeah even here these things are there so wherever you tap in the ui it has this star kind of look as you can see it looks like a little bit of like galaxy kind of look over here but the only thing i would say is a little bit disappointing for me is in the battery settings there is no option to see the actual screen on time which has been removed i guess which is kind of weird but yes that's how it is you can see the full battery usage from here and you can see the other things like the adaptive battery preference and stuff then we have the battery percentage showing up option but again no option to see the screen on time over here also the fast charging is working fine and that is not a problem here but the ideal drain is a little bit more if you compare it with other custom roms i would say and everywhere in the settings ui as you can see there are those stretchy kind of feeling animation over here as you can see so you will find this pretty much everywhere in the ui and all over the ui you will find much more animations and here i have installed a nikita gcam over here and with this the nikita gcam is working flawlessly and as you can see there is the front camera and stuff and the front camera and stuff I, I did try and they are working fine and i'll list this camera if you need it and portrait mode also is working without any issues so i don't have any problems with uh, like gcam over here yes i did install it separately there is no camera present by default here so you have to keep that in mind by the way the flashlight and stuff everything is working as you can see and talking about the stock launcher again we have the pixel launcher by default to the left we get the google's discovered page also there is one more change that is the widget section and as you can see over here if you tap and hold there is a little bit of gap over here on these settings and if you go into the widgets this is how it looks like so let me actually add one and let me show you and by the way the keyboard section looks like this and all the keys have a little bit of vertical kind of tall over here this kind of look that you get and you can just add a widget like this and this like back sometimes doesn't work but you can actually increase the size over here of the widget just like this so yeah the widgets are totally working fine no issues with that and you can actually use this and we have these a little bit of like rounded corners over here if you're looking at the widgets over here and there is the like if you swipe up we have the app drawer but you cannot simply disable the suggestions over here that's how it is and if you swipe down we have the quick settings panel and in the quick settings panel of course this is how it looks if you have not seen the latest android 12 quick settings panel again this is how it looks we have these like brightness sliding option over here and this is how it looks like looks very beautiful in my opinion and you can edit and add multiple toggles over here and you just like scroll vertically as you can see then you can add multiple toggles there are kind of a lot more toggles but of course it's not as much as a custom rom or something so that's how it is 
Also, there is this extra dim toggle if you want to use that. As you can see, this just makes the screen a little bit dimmer, even though you have full brightness turned on. So this is how it is. It is kind of a DC dimming kind of feature over here for IPS displays, I feel. So yeah, this might be universal for all the devices. So that's good. And of course, you can use the normal brightness stuff and the dark theme I have been using. And there is also the screen recorder. With this, you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. So yeah, that's there. And here we have the night light and stuff as you can see. And whenever you are turning on or turning off a toggle, there is those animations. If you look closely, let me show you. So yeah, everywhere in the UI, you will find those star kind of animation or galaxy kind of animation. And again, in the settings panel, this is how it looks. And here we have the profile picture of your account, your Google account pretty much. And we have the settings logo up here. Then we have the get to know your pixel kind of stuff. It shows some tips and stuff. And here, the only thing I would say that has changed in the settings panel that I see these like password and accounts where earlier it was only showing accounts, I guess. Then we have the safety and emergency here. Also, we see the styles and wallpapers, not in the display settings, but outside over here, like on the open settings. As you can see, there is the display settings and there is the styles and wallpapers. So the styles and wallpapers, it was earlier in the display settings, but right now it has been moved like on the settings panel over here itself. Now jumping into the notifications, this is how it looks like. We have the conversations, then we have the bubbles option. So yeah, and we have all the like other notification options. There is a do not disturb and stuff, then the blink light and stuff is there. Let me go back, we have the sound and vibration. Here we have all the media control panel. This is how the volume panel feels really, really cool, I would say. And it definitely looks different than all other custom ROMs that I have seen. Also, it definitely looks closer to MIUI maybe, but yeah, that's how I feel. Or you can put the phone into vibrate or silent from here. And the vibration and haptics, as you can see, is there. And we have the ring vibration and stuff. The notification vibration and also touch vibration is there. Then if you scroll down, we have the dial per tone, screen locking sound, charging sound, charging vibration, etc. And the shortcut to prevent ringing and stuff is there. Also, there is no me audio dirac over here, of course, as of now. And in the recent panel, this is how it looks like. We have the screenshot taking option. Then we have the selection kind of option. You can go into the split screen or pin a particular app or you go into the freeform mode with this kind of toggle. And here we have the display settings. Here we have brightness level, adaptive or auto brightness and the lock screen kind of privacy stuff is there. Then we have the wake screen for notification. And by the way, the lock screen looks like this again and looks very, very different and very beautiful when compared to other ROMs, surely. And whenever you are plugging in the charger, this is how it looks like. And yeah, this is a very beautiful animation. If you haven't noticed that, let me show you again with a little bit of slow-mo. And yeah, the clock is too big right now. So if you would like to see the time like this much big, definitely Android 12 is your thing. And here the fingerprint scanner is also working fine. Let me show you. There is no double tap to sleep in the UI. So I'm going to just use the power button to lock the device. And as you can see, the fingerprint scanner speed is completely fine. No issues whatsoever. And by the way, this is how the pin section looks like. And whenever you're tapping a button, it becomes square as you can see for the moment whenever you are tapping it. And yeah, this is how the pin section looks like. Dark theme is there, but there in the dark theme, there is no option to like get the actual AMOLED or pitch black kind of dark over here as of now. There's the font size and stuff, display size, and night light is also there and you can also schedule it if you want to. Colors are there, but there is no option. I could not see the options. Auto rotate screen is there, increased touch sensitivity is there, but I'm not really sure how it does that. Screen saver mode is there and also the double tap to wake is actually working fine here. In the styles and wallpapers, you can customize the theme. As you can see, I have created a theme over here. There are a couple of presets and also if you tap on the like button, you get these many fonts. Then if you click next, as you can see, even over here, we have this stretchiness kind of feeling over here in the animations as you are noticing. And if you tap next, you get to like choose the accent colors. And these are the accent color presets that you get. So yeah, not much options are there as of now, as you can see, no yellow or something, at least as of now, but yes, there will be like more accent colors in futures, of course. And there is a grid option. You get up to this five by five grid, I guess. And in the wallpaper section, we have the come alive and stuff. Then we have these downloading options of these kind of pixel wallpapers pretty much. And we also have these earth kind of wallpapers. So yeah, a lot of wallpapers are there. These also like we get the living universe kind of live wallpapers, but I have been using with the Walpi app, like 
this wallpaper I have been using is from the Wallpi app and it looks great in my opinion. You can use the Wallpi app I listed below in the description, do not worry. Here in the security settings, as you can see, there is only pixel imprint option. There is no option for the face unlock or there is no app lock as of now, of course. So yeah, pretty much pixel kind of experience and you do not get any kind of customization. This is completely vanilla Android experience over here with Android 12, of course. So let's try the Google Assistant now. I have completed the setup of it. Hey Google. As you can see, Google Assistant is actually working fine. And this is how it looks like in the dark theme. Yeah, Google Assistant is actually working fine. No issues with the voice trigger, like, hey Google triggers the Google Assistant. And whenever you are increasing the volume, this is how it looks like. And whenever you are decreasing with the like, volume button, this is how it looks like. Very cool, I would say. By the way, the power menu is still like similar looking as you can see. And yeah, you get the smart home controls over here. Also, we have the restart option and the power of option over here. No advanced reboot as of now, I guess. Now let's quickly do one thing that let's open a couple of apps and let me just show you how is the RAM management. Okay, so I did open a couple of apps over here. So right now let's open all the apps from memory. As you can see, Chrome is in memory, I guess. And Twitter still in memory. Now Play Store, yes, still in memory. And also the Play Store is working super fine. No issues with the Play Store. Now this Files app, it is working fine. Instagram is still working fine. Google Home, as you can see, still in memory. And Facebook, yes, still in memory. So yeah, even though the UI is a little bit laggy, but all the apps are staying in memory. So huge thumbs up to Android 12 for this kind of like really amazing memory management. And yeah, the animation sometimes feels a little bit choppy, but of course this is port one or the beta one. So definitely it's gonna be better in the future updates. As you can see, you can switch between apps just like this and all the apps are staying in memory. So that is great, but it froze the YouTube app and yeah, right now it's back. So you might see a little bit of freezes here and there. And also even inside this YouTube app, as you can see, there is this stretchiness kind of over here. And whenever you're opening a particular app or any app for that matter, most of the apps has this kind of animation and it shows the apps icon for a moment whenever you open that particular app. So as you are noticing, these are the like circular kind of app logo that I'm talking about. So whenever you open any particular app on Android 12, you will see this circular, that app specific logo. And if you're wondering about the benchmarks here are the Android and Geekbench score. If you're wondering about the performance over here. And yeah, let me just do a speed test so that I can see if my Wi-Fi speeds are fine. By the way, I have a 75 Mbps connection and this is a in-band router I'm using over here, not a AC router. So yeah, maybe it stays like about 60 Mbps most of the time, 60, 65 over here. So yeah, 58 download, that's fine. And uploads are about, okay, so 80, that's really good. So yeah, pretty much 76 uploads and 58 downloads are totally fine. So actually the Wi-Fi like reception is totally fine, no issues with that. And also the vault e calling and stuff should be working flawlessly over here, no issues with that. And also you have Magisk over here, I guess, right out of the box. Because earlier I did not flash it, but it is there. I think Magisk is there. Like you just have to install it, the APK I mean. And here after you install Magisk and enable the Magisk hide and stuff, let me show you. If you test it with the safety net checker, as you can see, you have the safety net pass totally. So you can actually use banking apps. That is just amazing that you can use banking apps already on Android 12 ROM on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. And here, instead of Redmi, it shows this red fin, as you can see. Talking about DRM info, as you can see, the DRM status still stays L1 over here. So that is cool. You can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. So yeah, you should not be worried about your DRM certification over here, even if you're flashing this Android 12 ROM. So that's great. Also, if you're worried about the IR Blaster over here, IR Blaster is working flawlessly. I have tested this with my LED RGB strips and with other things. The IR Blaster is actually working fine. Even with MIDI mode, you can try it. So yeah, no issues with the IR Blaster either. So what do I think about the Android 12 port beta one on the Redmi Note 7 Pro? I would say this is one of the best ROMs out there that you can try based on Android 12 because this is the only option, but it is still a great option. Huge thanks to the developers for this kind of amazing port, which they have done for the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Pretty glad to use this kind of like early builds over here on this particular device. And yes, there is not much features like no double tap to sleep over here. And of course, no brightness slider adjustment over here by just doing this as you can see. So these things are not there. Yes, 
but definitely this is one of the best experience that you can get right now with android 12 on this particular device no customization straight up vanilla stock android experience on top of android 12 of course so yeah that's how i feel let me know in the comments what do you guys think thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now